Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy, and this is introduction to Visual Basic for applications. In this case, this particular application is Excel, and Visual Basic for applications is more commonly referred to as VBA. So VBA is a powerful, not powerful, it's a useful programming language to really enhance your use of Excel allows you to do a lot of things that you couldn't do in Excel or allows you to automate a lot of the tasks that would be very difficult, especially for very routine tasks or if you want to develop some user forms, it's really, really useful. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I want you to do is to add this developer tab. So I am using Excel 2013, but it should look fairly similar to uh, 2010. It will look probably quite different than than 2003 but let's just get started so you want to go to uh, file then options then you want to click on custom a ribbon and then I believe the best way is to go to custom tabs and then just add it in this case I already, I already have it added so developer tabs super useful really great to uh, to use um, it's one way to get into the visual basic code so you just click here to Visual Basic. Another way, is to, which is probably the more common way I, I do it, is Alt F11, and then you'll be given to this like um, different screen. And uh, what you'll notice is if you don't have this area, which is called the Project Explorer, open, I really recommend that you have it open. So if I were to close it, for example, the way you go is View, and then go Project Explorer or Control R, either one. Uh, really useful tab to have open a really useful window to have open and really critical so what I'm going to show you next is uh, next thing you should do is add a module and what a module do, does is it allows you to assign code to a particular module uh, you could also assign code to the individual sheet but we'll, we'll get into when you apply it to a sheet versus module uh, in a little bit or you can apply it to this workbook as well uh, but for now, we're going to leave it as uh, as a module. So once you have your module open up, like there's a couple of things that you can do right away. So a couple of things I, I recommend is one, you can use this like apostrophe. And then basically what it does is it creates comments. So you can see right there, the text is in green versus when I go range A1, uh, well, if I could spell dot value equals one uh, it doesn't show it in green so you can and you can literally put the apostrophe almost anywhere you can put here uh, to making a one equal to one as an example so comments are really really important when you when you're programming because uh, not only for yourself because oftentimes you'll program something and then you'll come back to it later and be like why did I do this for? And you'll have to like kind of go through the logic again rather than already knowing and identifying really quickly what the program's for. But it's also really useful for, for someone else. It may not matter when you have like one line of code like this, uh, but it's it's pretty important. So but before we do all that, first thing you want to do is develop a subroutine. And subroutine is just basically a, a series of codes, basically uh, the macro. So here we're going to go sub. Uh, we're going to call it sub format and then what you'll see here it added uh, an open bracket and a closed bracket and an end sub which basically tells you where the end of your code is so this is basically where you would write your code but let's go over an example just so that you can actually see uh, what the code would look like so the simplest way and when you're first playing with macros this is and oftentimes I, I do this as well when I'm trying to figure out what the particular code is um, is you want to go to let's go to the view tab and go to macro and then click on record macro and record macro we're gonna call this um, we're gonna call this test and we're gonna store it in in this workbooklet which is the workbooklet with the macro you're gonna see uh, some uh, some different uses of of these terms you apply for different uh, like you'll see like active workbooklet this workbooklet and it may seem similar when you when you do all your work in the same workbooklet 
but it'll become a really important differentiation when you start to create more complex programs. So if I were to click record macro and I were to put uh, one in A1 and I were to put two in A2 and put three in A3, for no, and I'll just throw in uh, an R in A4 for whatever reason, and I click stop recording macro, what you'll see here is that another module is already been created. And what you'll see here, it provides some comments saying that this is test macro, create the subroutine test, which is then again, the macro. And then what you'll see here, it says active cell, which is the cell that the cursor is on, uh, went to the formula and did quotations one, and then it selected, and then I went down and selected A2. And since A2 is now the active cell, uh, it made the formula two, um, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see here a really quick and easy way of understanding uh, macros. But let's try to do the same thing, uh, but writing it out ourselves. So what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to clear everything. So a couple, yeah, obviously a couple ways to clear. It. You guys, if you guys are watching this video, hopefully you know the the basics of Excel. So let's try to do the same thing. So there's a, a couple ways of doing it, but I'm going to show you probably the simplest way of doing it. Maybe not the most automated way of doing it. So for for you that already know a bit of Visual Basic, so don't be panic. We're going to do more advanced stuff and create really efficient scripts afterwards. So a really easy way is you can basically use this function called range. And range is basically, let's d define the range. So for example, if I were to go here and I were going like this, the range would be from B3 to B6. So if I want to define a range, define the object, uh, in this case, I want to go A1, and that, I'm just going to leave that as my range. Uh, you saw there that they, they use formulas, which is, which is a good way of approaching as well. But if you're just going to have a, a single value, uh, another way of doing it is to press, uh, is to use this function called value. And then you just make it equal to one. And then essentially what you can do is copy and paste, change this to A2, A3, 3, 2, 1. And if we were to, if we were to go here, one way of running, running the script is to uh, press F5 if you want to all run it at once. Another way is to press F8, which is basically debugging and running one line at a time. So if we press F8, you'll see this yellow indicates like what line it's going to run. And then if we go to line two, so you see right now it's going to run this line. And then you'll see here on the other side of the screen, it says one, two, three. So that's how basically how you define how you use this function called value to come up with uh, uh, basically input a particular value. You could have made a, uh, any any number of items. In fact, in fact, you could have made it quotation one if you wanted to as well. So we can make it quotation A, B, well, okay, if I could spell C. And then you'll see here. So you can make a, a number of different valid values for that particular cell. It's just like the same thing as typing into the cell. That's essentially what it's doing. And if you're, and there's a number of different functions. So one way to see all the number of different functions that are available is to press Control J, and then you'll see a number of different items. Another way you could have wrote the same piece of code is you could have done select and then go active cell dot uh, and then you could have did value same thing and did one and then did the same uh, thing afterwards so that's the uh, introduction so I showed you how to add the developer tab which is useful because you can click on visual basic and it'll also be useful when we're creating buttons and creating user forms later on I showed you what the visual basic window is and the explorer window and where you put your code how to set up a subroutine how to record a macro and then take a look at how it's actually done 
And then as well, I showed you a number of different ways of adding values, either either going selecting doing the range and then just automatically adding the value or selecting the, the cell, selecting the cell and that being the active cell and then making that particular value. So in the next lesson, I think we'll start uh, doing variables. We'll probably do a for next statement and probably cover off message boxes. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, based on the next lesson. So stay tuned and look forward to speaking to you next time.